Welcome to the Dean Bodie Podcast, a special Mother's Day edition. All right. Well, happy Mother's Day to my mom. Love you very much, mom. Hope you have a fantastic day. Going on, I don't know what it, not going on 92, but really 41. <laughs> My mom is very special uh, to me. Uh, we've had a very close relationship uh, my whole life. And, you know, she's right in there with the times, too. Uh, lives by herself, almost 92, smartphone, on Facebook, the Uber, the lift to the doctor or the store, very self-sufficient. And, um, you know, my biggest hero in life, for sure. And if I can make it as far as she has the miracle that that is wow that would be some accomplishment but big shout out to you mom and uh, i love you very much once again and happy mother's day hope you have a great one today then a shout out to all the moms out there uh, but especially mine <laughs> and uh um always a special day so um that being said Wow, let's um let's kick off the Dean Bodie show with dan da dan da 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 It's Dean and Bodie show. And we're having, we're having a pretty awesome day over here today. We did some late night laundry, Bodie and I. Bodie, those of you that are just joining me for the first time, this is episode nine. We are rolling. Um Bodie is my Shiba Inu, love of my life. My fantastic doesn't even fit into the dog category. She is my four-legged soulmate and um what a just we just had an awesome day today walking around the neighborhood doing our thing a little bit of work and we did a youtube uh, video earlier today and uh you know talked about some anxiety had a little bit of an anxiety theme the last couple episodes and well it's important not just to me, but a lot of people deal with it. You know, in the branches of, I was talking about derealization and depersonalization um, and my experiences with that since 1994. It's been a roller coaster ride for me. But I had a major episode last night in the wee hours uh, doing the podcast and uh, I talked about this. <laughs> Let me tell you, man, the one thing that I know. Uh, is a common thread. Not only is the stress involved, uh, the fight or flight mechanism, right? Um, and it could come after, you know, an alcoholic night, an alcohol night, or a drug induced night, or or one of those things. So this, you kind of create the perfect storm, as I'm going to call it. And that fear element is in there. And I think when you're when you're going through the anxiety, and um, maybe a hangover or, or your diet's like a mess, a super uh, stressful time in your life, and you, the circuit breaker blows, you know? And there's a fear in there, a component. And when that perfect storm comes, whammo, that's exactly what happens. It's that, like that cog wheel that gets stuck in the fight or flight mechanism. Recognize it. Don't be afraid of it. And uh, your body will um, start to recalibrate as you go on with your day to day uh, and move forward. You know, clean up whatever you got to clean up as far as dietary. Or, you know, I definitely recommend staying away from the alcohol, the drugs, uh, no caffeine, stay away from the sugar. Just eat clean while your body's going through this recalibrating in the healing process. Exercise is big. Everyone, you know, um, you don't have to run a marathon and all that, but going for walks on a daily, okay, 40 to 50 minutes, um, some strength training is huge and, and things like that. Stationary bike, regular bike, get out there, give that trapped adrenaline somewhere to go so it can be released and your body can readjust, your body chemistry can balance out, hormones will balance out and, um, you know, your body will start functioning better and it'll that that locked up cogwheel, that fight or flight will release and you'll get normal again. You know, so no one's saying, oh, you can never have a cup of coffee ever again and all that. I'm not saying that, but you're going to learn if you want to keep this thing at bay and you don't want as many episodes uh, like that again. 
you won't do that again because it, it'll happen again. You know, if you keep repeating, you know, they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. You know, it took me a long time in my cement head to get it, to get that message a very long time. You know, you get cocky. You know, what's funny is that your body can heal just about basically anything. And when you go through that, you come out of it enough times, you start to get a little bit, you know, oh, you here it is again and I'll get through it. But it's pretty exhausting. <laughs> I got news for you. I've gone round and round with this thing since 1994. I'll let you do the math on the years with that. Um, what, 94 to 2004 is 10 years, 2014 would be 20, add another six, come on, you know, you're talking over a quarter century of dealing with this thing, um, you know, I'm going to consider myself an expert, for real, and I know how when I say these, these tips, it's like a short list, but you know what, that's the whole thing, when you're experienced at something, You've gone through all the mistakes. You've done all the roller coaster rides. You've done it and you shave it down to what works. And usually it's not that long of a list. It's not that complicated, you know? And um, so, and I'll be sharing more and more uh, different experiences I've had with it. Maybe more people will relate to it and things like that. I have a thousand stories, um, none of them fun, but you learn to cope, you know? And going from where I was last night, I mean, all of a sudden I had an episode and I blacked out. I couldn't remember how to um, download the podcast and, you know, uh, and do all that process. I was like really weird. I was sitting frozen, dumbfounded, and I couldn't figure it out. And I finally ended up figuring it out. But not really all the way. It was like I've kind of fumbled through it. I'm like, wow, what's going on? Am I going to not remember how to do this ever again? It's tripped me out. I got to be honest with you. It tripped me out. But I had to go lay down for a little while. And I, I touched on a little bit that the, the importance of sleep. You know, your body heals when it rests. Remember that. You're, if you're going and you're grinding and you're going, not, not to mention all of this other stress that's going on in the world. And even though... Well, maybe you're not watching the news or you're not really letting it, you know, um, hammer you over the head every five seconds. I definitely don't recommend that. You know, you want to keep up to date of what's going on in a normal way. But that, even though you think you're handling it, let me tell you, that low level stress or medium level, that's, it's very insidious. And that's part of the perfect storm also. And then it's like, boom, that one extra thing is like the straw that broke the camel's back. But it's not really. It's an accumulation. And you create that perfect storm. And that's when it happens. So by cleaning things up and doing the right things, you create the perfect storm the other way. So your body can recalibrate and balance. It's, you have to put it in an environment so it can fix itself. You can't just be doing the same thing. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to smoke weed. I feel better. I'm going to go get hammered and do shots of whiskey, and I'm gonna, nothing's going to stop me. I used to do that kind of stuff. And you know what you end up doing? You put a Band-Aid over it, and you kind of put yourself in a little cocoon, and you do kind of forget about it um, as you would when you um, – use chemicals, right? But it doesn't fix it. It's a patch up work, right? It's a patch up. Um, it doesn't get to the, to the root of the problem. You want to be able to know that you can do it without that being intoxicated or using drugs or whatever. Forget being, or you don't want to be buzzed anymore. I mean, I'm going to, I'm be going to be going on four years with not a sip of anything, I feel way better. God knows my liver and kidney thank me for it. And um, it's just one of those things I just said to myself, you know what? I don't want to be buzzed anymore. That was the phrase I used. And I, you have to replace it with something else um, to give you that satisfaction of whatever you were going out and, and the mingling and the socializing and the, the adrenaline rush that goes along with that. That's where the exercise comes in. That's where focusing on cleaning up your diet comes in and some good quality supplementation. That's focus on some good mental health um, 
aspects, whether it's spiritual, uh, however you want to practice that, whether it's some kind of form of meditation, going for daily walks, that's very meditative right there in itself. Going on, walking on a treadmill, uh, on a stationary bike. I don't care if it's marching in place. That's some kind of form of a meditative, repetitive um, uh, exercise. And you're going to feel a lot better. You, you're going to get those endorphins going. And those enkephalons. And all that other stuff that your body... <clears throat> excuse me. Your body can make those chemicals and start to rewire Get that chemistry balance. It'll happen. You just got to stay on it. You got to get momentum going. You got to keep your foot on the gas. And it works. I have done that formula since 1994 a thousand times over. It took me a while to learn that I got to stop a certain thing, period. But I did do the roller coaster ride. And that formula of what basically what I just told you that short list fixes it. But it's exhausting going through it time and time again. Now when it comes, I recognize it. Like 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 last night's episode, um, after a night's sleep and got up, we're good again. Never would have happened before. Never would have happened before with the chemicals and the alcohol and things like that in your way. You're not handling it. You're just trying to patch it up. And you're not going to get that long-lasting, um, solid rewiring that your body needs. So not to go down too much of a rabbit hole with that today, but um, it's important. And, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> I hope it helps and that kind of thing. And um, so what else is going on with me? Um, I wanted to kind of uh, <laughs> uh, just talk about cherry pick something out of my life and, you know, and, and talk about a story and as I was, I, I've mentioned some stories when I, I grew up in Miami, Florida, uh, in Kendall, and I played my little league sports at a place called K Land. And I touched on my baseball, and I touched on the on, on going and winning the World Series in my particular league. I touched on playing in the uh, the, the All Star game um, on my undefeated 65 pound football. And we got to play at the halftime show at the Miami Hurricane game, a little scrimmage uh, for 15 minutes on artificial turf. Amazing. Both of those things were amazing. And uh, there was a time where after the 65 pounds, then we went to the 85 pounds. I remember living in a development, Kendall Point in Miami. Just kids everywhere. It was it was fantastic, you know, and uh, for a kid to grow up in that environment. And I remember other kids were in that league in K-Land and one of them was like, come play on my team. And the other one was like, no, play on mine. And I got into this kind of between two friends on where I was going to go play. And it was kind of a weird thing. It was like, wow, I'm actually one friend is jealous of the other. And you start experiencing these different things like that. But I ended up going to play and this one coach and I, we didn't seem to hit it off very well. And... um I would play wide receiver and he kept throwing, they kept throwing the pass to the other wide receiver who was in my class in elementary school. I remember, and he was making some good catches and some good plays and I was not getting the ball and it was irritating the hell out of me. And I finally walked up to the coach and I said, can you throw me the ball once? And he gives me this look like, you know, what are you telling me how to coach? And I'm thinking like, you know, I don't know. He's like, I thought he was like playing favorites. I mean, they just throw it to the other guy all the time. I haven't, haven't even had the opportunity to show my skills. So he finally caves in and they throw me a pass way over my head, way over my head. No way I was going to catch it. And then there was no more passes again after that, right back to the other guy again. So I ended up doing the wrong thing, actually, not the, when I look back on it, but I quit the team. I quit the team because I was being a little crybaby. And uh, I probably would have got the passes thrown to me if I would have hung in there. It is a team sport. It's not about me. But when you're young and you want to show off and you want to, um, you know, be that, that star like you were in the 65-pound team, all of a sudden now you're not even getting the ball. Lessons in life. Stick, it, stick in there. Hang in there. And, um, you know, if you're... 
supporting the team. It is a team effort. And uh, that's just one of the lessons I learned. And I look back on that wishing I would have hung in there. So same with this thing with the anxiety or anything in life. You got to hang in there. You got to keep moving forward. There's always going to be the ups and downs. Not everything's going to go your way. Now this crazy thing with the, what's going on with the world right now. Do I have to say the P word? I'd rather not have to say the P word, but you know what I mean. Um, we're going to come out bigger, better, and stronger from this, okay? And the powers that be are going to do what they do. And, you know, that's what's going on right now. And hopefully, um, sooner than later, things will start to level out and the country will get back into full swing again with a little bit different attitude some other some different health practices and um, it's going to be interesting to see but the bottom line is you got to keep your immune system strong take care of yourself okay and um, you know so you can handle the stresses that are coming your way and of course viruses and bacteria we're always living with them anyway you want to keep your immune system strong so you can fight off these things Right. So when this clears up and the world gets back on track, um, you're going to be ready for the next thing and um, be ready for what's coming. Right. Uh, stay motivated, stay focused and um, you know, keep moving forward. But again, happy Mother's Day um, to all the moms out there. Mom, especially you. Love you very much and hope you have a fantastic Mother's Day tomorrow. You know, just in case anybody doesn't know, I'm in Dallas. She's in Florida. And, um, you know, so I'm going to miss you very much. And hopefully this will clear up quickly and we'll get to make a, make a travel plans and um, get out there and, you know, get back to some kind of normal, normal thing again. But um, anyways... Have a great rest of your day today. Have a great rest of your weekend. Remember, Dean Bodie at gmail.com. You want to send comments or questions in there, and uh, we'd be happy to use some of your wisdom on one of the podcasts and uh, share. You might say that one thing that, you know, helps somebody else. And we're going to talk about whatever we want to talk about on the Dean Bodie podcast. Um, look for the YouTube channel, Dean Bodie on YouTube and doing some nice videos on there as well. And, um, you know, wherever you, wherever you listen to podcasts, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Google, um, we're on those. Uh, and, you know, we're going to keep this coming on a daily. And as we figure out this fun process, and uh, hopefully um, you're enjoying the journey along with, with Bodhi and I. Okay, so have a great day. And remember... Dan, 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 dan. It's Dean and Bodie's show. Have an awesome day. Talk to you soon. Bye bye now.